Well, welcome out there to my program once again. Always a pleasure to be here and uh, always uh, happy to have you uh, tell me that you watch the show. And uh, tonight, uh, well, this is uh, the day after the city council meeting. And uh, a couple of days after a new story broke in the city of Fall River that people uh, still find uh, fairly astounding that uh, a meeting took place be, uh, called by uh, some say, uh, or one says uh, Mayor Flanagan, uh, Mayor Flanagan says no, it was uh, called by a uh, city councilor. But they met uh, in the mayor's car, and this was uh, quite late at night, apparently down near the uh, old Water Street Cafe, which is called the Boondocks now. Uh, J. Jules Correa was invited into the mayor's car, sat there in a the passenger seat, uh, there was a Mr. Gosselin in the uh, back, a uh, local businessman, and eventually uh, Paul De Silvia, a city councilor, arrived and uh, he joined the group by uh, sitting in the back seat also. But what took place uh, is uh, kind of still a bit he said, she said, but J. Joe Correa, the city councilor, said that uh, uh, he was uh, pretty much uh, told by uh, the mayor to uh, retract the, his signature on a petition to call, recall the mayor. And uh, Mr. Correa, J. J. Correa, the city councilor, uh, pretty much said he wasn't going to do that. And before uh, things got uh, too far along the line, uh, there was a discussion about a gun. The mayor said that he does carry. He took his gun out. His gun was placed somewhere in a vehicle. And uh, someone said that uh, it's dangerous out there. Well, Mr. Correa uh, kept that to himself for a while, except uh, he did talk to uh, City Councilor Joe Camara. Uh, Jesus Correa was undecided whether he should report uh, what took place to the police chief in Fall River. Eventually he did, and Councilor Joe Camara accompanied him down to the police station. And that's pretty much uh, the, uh, the gist of the story. And uh, since then, it's uh, been swirling around as to uh, the legalities of it, the uh, ethical uh, proprieties of it. But it, um, it doesn't seem uh, that, it, well, it, it won't be going away for a while. And uh, my guest is someone who uh, has been very, very involved with the recall petition. And this is how uh, this all started with uh, this um, apparent meeting in uh, the mayor's car in regards to the recall petition. And uh, well, uh, I have with me in the studio C.J. Ferry, and he's one of the leaders of the recall petition. C.J. Ferry, welcome to the program. Thank you, Richard. It's always a pleasure to be here. I always have a good time on the show. Good for you. <laughs> C.J., uh, you and a number of other people uh, started uh, the recall petition. When did you start the recall petition? Well, as you know, um, the recall process has been going on for some time. It was started originally about uh, two years ago, and um, that was uh, originally 10 gentlemen who got together uh, and met, and I was called in only to certify the signatures and issue the affidavit. Um, and they met roadblocks issued by uh, corporate counsel at that time. Well, you notarized them. But I notarized you, you them. You notarized them. I notarized them. And um, there was a question about a couple of the signatures which I did not notarize, which were notarized by another person. Um, and that was neither here nor there. And they kept saying it wasn't notarized properly and the right affidavits weren't taken or given. And so they met a lot of roadblocks. They just said it wasn't worth it. Um, this time out, it started probably um, shortly after the mayor's 90 days expired. Um, the law requires, uh, which is a special act of legislation, Chapter 292 of the Acts of 1980, um, require that any elected official who is in office must serve at least 90 days before recall can start. Um, so the individuals who were interested in doing this waited the 90 days 
and they still felt they needed to start this recall. Um, but with the apathy that we see in Fall River with people getting involved. You're talking about this process two years ago. Well, I'm talking about the process as it's coming forward now. Okay. Um, they had to wait 90 days after the mayor took office right. before they could act this time. So the mayor took office in, in January and um, the 90 days went by and there were 10 people already together to file this petition. The problem was they couldn't see enough people coming out to help them get the, enough signatures for it to pass. So they held off on, on filing that petition and putting it together and they waited and I, I was talking to them and I was part of that whole process. And then all of a sudden this page was created on Facebook called Threw Up in Fall River. And it was created because its founder, which was Jordan, uh, Jordan Sylvia, um, was denied a right uh, by City Council President Joe Camara to speak at what he thought was citizens' input time at, at the moment. And citizens' input time had passed. Uh, and it created a whole big show at, at the City Council hearing. Now, this took place a couple of months ago or Yeah, so? about a month and a half, two months ago. All right. Okay. Uh, and when that happened, that page threw up in Fall River, went from zero, the one guy who created it, to now almost 4,000 people who are fed up with Fall River. And that page is created, was not created to recall the mayor. That page was created to give the people of Fall River a place to vent and speak freely without having anyone shut them down. Okay, so in other words, at one time you could do that on a Herald News, but they're sort of somewhat restrictive uh, at this point. So this was a, a new way of uh, uh, people could voice their opinion. Now, um, and that, that, that stemmed from that initial um, uh, uh, lack of being uh, able to uh, address the city council and citizens' input time. Now, these, these people were just uh, venting their, their frustration with a number of things going on in the city of Fall River. All right, and then pay as you throw, I, I think you might be leading up to that. Right, and then pay as you throw came, came down the pike and the mayor said, it's going to happen. It's going to happen whether you want it or not. I'm saying it's going to happen, and it's going into effect August 1st. Well, in, July, in June and July, and people are hearing this. They're saying, you know, who are you? What are you doing? You can't do this. The city council had no say. Nobody had any say on it. And that was it. That was the straw that broke the camel back. The people were sick of the tax increases, the fees, um, the increasing water fees, the, the you know, combined sewer overflow fee or the rainwater tax that never got repealed, the broken promises, and all of a sudden it all started coming out. And they all started saying, let's get rid of this mayor. Well, now these are the people who, who have been uh, uh, posting comments on the... Uh, the Throw Up and Fall River page, yes. Okay, so these are the people that, that started to, uh, to get energized in the sense they wanted something done. Correct, and they were saying they wanted something done. So uh, Chip and I both noticed that, and we, we were somehow or another invited to that page. And next thing you know, they're talking about the recall page, because there, there is a, a page, the Committee to Recall Mayor Flanagan, that had been created for some time, and it people are starting to join that page. And they're like, how do we get this done? How do we get this done? How do we get this done? And we so posted... So was that, that, that uh, initial... Uh uh, initiative uh, to uh, recall a mayor having a, a lack of people uh, that interested and all of a sudden uh, tr became something uh, of greater significance in the sense that more people became interested in that recall page. Yeah, it right? was like a firecracker. It was like all of a sudden somebody lit the firecracker, the catalyst was there, boom! Everybody came out of the work. They were going to get the signatures. And they did a very good job of doing it. Um, they we had made sure that we checked the law over very carefully and we followed the provisions of the law line for line. It said we only needed 10 people, we got 12 in case they disqualified somebody. For the affidavit. For the affidavit. The affidavit was filled out, it was worded in such a way that everywhere you looked it said, and the following affidavit, the following affidavit, the following affidavit, and this affidavit is signed to the pains and penalties. And, that, that's where you, and that's where you had problems uh, previously Previously, with the, ba basically with the affidavit, you couldn't get past that. Right. All right, so the affidavit got filed, and about the same time, of course, you have all these people who are uh, 
showing uh, a lot of interest in, in being part of the recall uh, process. So how did you get, uh, how, how was the contact made with people who said, you know, I, I'm interested in this and I'd like to be part of it? That was, you know, that was the really weird part about it. We didn't have to go looking. They came, they came looking for us. And, you know, we filed the petition on August 12th and that gave us 20 days to file it. The 20th day fell on Labor Day. State law says that if a deadline date for nomination papers, uh, petition questions, et cetera, et cetera, falls on a Sunday or a holiday, it is on the next day. Suppose it falls on a Saturday. I guess City Hall could be open on a Saturday. They All can right. choose to open on a Saturday. But if it fell on a Sunday or a holiday, it will next day. Right. Just now like I uh, when we file our taxes. Exactly. If we have a holiday on a Monday in Massachusetts, you can file your return on a Tuesday. Correct. So, so you had get, you get all these people and, and they were out there. How many people did you have roughly that were collecting signatures? Um, like any organization, you have a small core which does 90% of the work. Yeah. That small core consisted of about 20 to 25 people. And how many signatures did they, did they collect roughly? Uh, themselves, they probably collect somewhere in the vicinity of 3,000 signatures. Okay. And, then and that was done mainly on weekends. They did that. And there weren't too many weekends in a 20-day 20, 20 20, period. No, no. And um, the balance of the people were getting signatures at work. Uh, they were getting signatures um, in their members, neighborhoods, their uh, family members. You know, oh, we got a family party this week. Because, again, this is August, so you, coming up to Labor Day. You collected 5,500. 5,549. 5,500, not 55. Yeah, 5,549, excuse me. Yeah. So uh, at this point, they're still being certified. Is that correct? correct? So you don't know if you get uh, the requisite amount. Correct. All right. Now, you were, uh, and your group will call some uh, real, uh, you know, derogatory <laughs> terms. We've been called uh, everything under the sun, yes. I mean, one that stands out with me is uh, thugs. Yep. Now, uh, what kind of thuggery did you use? Oh, we didn't use any, and that's the whole, that's the whole thing. You know, we've been told that we were chasing people down in um, par supermarket parking lots with a Walmart parking lot, telling them they had to sign. We were... Uh, you know, threatening people. Uh, I mean, you know, we were called terrorists. We were, I mean, you name it, we did it. We're blamed for the sinking of the Lusitania, the sinking of the Maine, uh, you know, crime the Titanic was our River. fault. Yep, crime in Fall no River. One, no one was paying attention <laughs> yep. to the issues because you were out there asking Correct. people yep. to sign a piece of and, paper. And I'll tell you, you know. I, so how did, how did you, um, what, what kind of uh, uh, threatening tactics did you use against Jaziel uh, Correa? Actually none. Jaziel came up to us and we have 10 people who were witnesses, and he, we have he, about he, four different cameras that were running, videotaping him, and he said, what is this about? And where was this video? Right in the atrium of Government Center. Okay, so he, he approached you. He approached us. Your group, and, and he said um, what? He actually approached Jordan Sylvia, and um, because of the nature of what we've already had encountered, um, we made sure that nobody was out without video cameras. So the video cameras were running, and there were, I said, four or five video cameras that were there. And Jaisal said, you know, what don't you like about me? Because Jordan had made some very strong statements against um, Jaisal Correa in the sense of his job, not in the sense of Jaisal as a person, but you can dislike a, a job performance and still not have a problem with the person. Sure. Um, and they started talking about that, and all of that's on video. And he said, well, what's this whole recall about? And, we, you know, Jordan explained it and said, this is what it's about. And he says, I'm going to sign that petition. And I'm not going to sign it because I believe that you want to recall the mayor. I want to sign it because I believe in the process. So I'm signing it as a point to say I believe in the democratic process. Now, has this been recorded? Yes, we have it on tape. All right, so there's, there shouldn't be any controversy about this. There's no controversy in our mind to, about it, but in other minds there are. Well, yeah. Uh, so in other words, he stepped forward voluntarily. Nobody had his arm up against, you know, the back of his uh, neck, uh, and he uh, he wanted to do it because he uh, he believed in the process, and he and he, he uh, knowingly and uh, voluntarily signed the recall petition. Yes. Now let's get to uh, the um, uh, last couple of days um, and a controversy in regards to the mayor of Fall River who carries uh, a weapon. And he, uh, he, he's been carrying the weapon only since he's become 
uh, the mayor of the city of Fall River. So th this doesn't stem from the day that he was a prosecutor. Now, uh, Jesuit Carrera basically saying he was, in, uh, he, you know, he was invited to this uh, to this uh, meeting. Now, I I, I don't want to speculate, uh, and, I, and I really don't want you to speculate. But um, has this has this, uh, in other words, vindicated your group in the sense that? Um, you know, any any controversy now in the city of Fall River, uh, any uh, lack of progress, uh, lack of jobs, uh, high crime, potholes, uh, that still exists. Yeah, and 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 we're still to blame for it. I mean, as a matter of fact, it was even mentioned on uh, WSAR at one point um, when a community business leader uh, said that, you know, since this whole recall process has started, you know, the economic decline of Fall River is still occurring. And I'm like, yeah, it wasn't occurring 20 years ago. It only started because the recall process began. Well, that's interesting that you mention that because uh, Rob Mellian, who is the executive director of the Chamber of Commerce, he, he pretty much made the same uh, statement that the recall petition has disrupted the city and, it, and it's caused a lot of anxiety within the business community. But uh, lack of business, lack of jobs, and uh, whatever else people feel is wrong with the city really preceded the recall petition drive. Of course it did. It's been here for years. And the thing is, is that um, when Jaisal came forward, and I and many members of the press, of whom I'm, uh, you know, part of the the, the press corps, uh, we knew that this was coming out. We couldn't say anything, and because we were asked not to until Jaisal was ready to go public. And once City Council Korea went public with this, the innuendo and the um, stories didn't stop. Uh, now it's the recallers who have threatened Jaisal. It's the recallers who have threatened his mother. It is the recallers that have threatened his family. But he hasn't said uttered one word. No, and as a matter of fact, in two separate interviews, his stories were almost exactly the same, and he said in both those interviews, the recallers did not threaten me. I have not been threatened by anyone in the recall process. Well, you, and you just mentioned that he, he, he uh, signed a petition in front Correct. of ten witnesses, and a uh, film was running, and and you have that film. Yes, we do. All right. Now, um, when uh, Councillor Correa decided to uh, to go public, when we say go public, uh, we're talking about the uh, the threat that he felt when uh, the mayor pulled a gun uh, out of his waistband, I imagine, and, and placed it somewhere in a vehicle uh, close uh, to uh, where Jezio was uh, sitting. Now, when did he? He actually go public, if you know. He went public with it, um, with his announcement on WSAR on Monday. Okay, on okay, Monday. Okay, which was uh, the 8th. Now, did he call in? Was he invited? He called in to WSAR. Just like a regular caller? No. It, oh. was, it was done during the news hour. Uh, Barry Richard was expecting his phone call, and he called in during that news hour, and he made his announcement. Um, he answered several questions from Barry Richard, and... Uh, then the mayor called in. The mayor hadn't been invited to call in. Uh, at which point, after Jaisal was done making his comments on WSAR, I was at Government Center. Um, and I was wearing my press badge and I had a video camera with me. I went into Government Center and went up to the sixth floor. I got to uh, the mayor's office, the door was locked, the window was sli uh, sli uh, slid open, and I called in, hello, hello, and I couldn't get anyone's attention. Um, I could hear people in the back corner office who were, you know, very upset. They were, they were talking very loudly at each other, almost yelling, you might say. Um, and I'm not going to go into the allegations of what was said. Uh, that's currently not important, but I did hear them. Uh, and so I turned around and I walked across the hall to corporate counsel's office. Now, this is a law office, so you would think that the door would be closed and locked. The door wasn't closed, it wasn't locked, and the door was left open in a jar. There was nobody in the office. I didn't even walk in. I stood outside the door and I said, hello, is anyone here? Because I wanted to get a comment. Nobody answered me at all. The door was open. The boxes were on the floor. The, the tops were off the boxes. They all looked like files. So I said, okay, fine. So I went downstairs to another floor. And I heard on another floor the radio. And I heard them talking about um, 
the statements made and the mayor had just called in. Do you, do you think that um, the, the mayor uh, was uh, invited to call in or do you think he might have been listening to Jezio, uh speaking to the station and decided he should? He should call in the mayor. From what I understand, he wasn't invited to call in. Yeah, but he must. He must but he called in, so he might have he heard. I would was, say he probably heard it. But again, lying. that's speculation. You know, it's a speculation. Sure. Um, but again, I went down to another floor and I heard uh, heard the employees listening to it. And I walked in and I said, "Do you have any comments on this?" I said, "You know, I, I'd really like to get some for for the TV show." And they said, "No, I don't want to be on camera. I, you know, I got to protect my job. But you might want to go down to the third floor because." Um, Tommy Goslin's wife works in the assessor's office. And I said, oh, okay. And if you listen to the story, uh, Councilor Correa said that in the vehicle was the mayor and him in the front seat. And in the back seat, there was a gentleman who became identified afterwards who was Thomas Goslin. Now, why, why uh, did, did it come out uh, as to why he, Mr. Goslin, would be sitting in the back seat? No, that never came out from Councilor Correa. But then, you know, moments after that, Councillor De Silva got into the back seat now, with Mr. Mr. Goslin is a businessman. What yes, kind of he business is. is he I believe in? he's Highland Fence Company. A fence business. All right, and so he happened to be sitting in the back seat. In the back seat. So the front seat was open, available, and uh, Jaziel Correa was expected to come down. Correct. To, uh, to have that meeting, and that meeting took place late at night. Yes. At the down at the waterfront, I, I call it down at the docks. It almost sounds like a scene out of the waterfront. <laughs> well, it's a strange place. Uh, it, it, it is. People have been talking about that for the last few days. Well, why? Why would there be a meeting uh, late at night down uh, along the waterfront? And uh, why would a gun be produced? And if you listen to what Mr. Correa said, uh, after the gun was produced, someone uttered the uh, comment: uh, it's, a, "It's dangerous out there." Right. And, and you know, so you have to you have to listen to that. And I listened to also the story that Mr. Goslin went on the air on the uh, Sense and Nonsense show on WSAR, and he gave his version of the story where he got out of the front seat and then into the back seat, so Councilor Correa could get into the front seat, uh, which was totally contradictory to what Councilor Correa said. Um, and again, this is the he said she said bit of the of the story. Uh, but I went down to the assessor's office. I opened the door and I was greeted at the counter after she was done with a, another uh, citizen who was, you know, taking care of an issue. And I said, is there Mrs. Goslin here I can speak to? And she goes, yeah, that's right there at the, the desk. And the woman was sitting behind her desk. And I said, Mrs. Goslin, I'm wondering if you have any comments on the allegations made by Councilor Correa in regards to your husband and the mayor uh, and some intimidation with a gun. And she goes, what? I said, the mayor had intimidated Councilor Correa, allegedly uh, intimidated Councilor Correa, and your husband was present. Do you have any comments? And she goes, no, I have no comments, no comments at all. And I said, okay, thank you very much. And I proceeded to walk out of the office. When the woman who greeted me at the counter said, is this for real? And I said, you can listen to it on WSAR. They're still broadcasting this now. Mm -hmm. And I left the office and I went downstairs and I went outside the building and, and downstairs in the uh, lobby area trying to find people that would give us a comment on what they thought about it. And we only found one person who was willing to go on camera, and she spoke very highly of the mayor. Uh, when you say we, who's we? Uh, we have a, a show, so we have the cameras that are out there, and we're asking people with our video cameras, right. do they have any comments were, on were it? You were you the only one going around? Or? I was the only one in, in government center. Okay. And so, again, I left. Next thing you know, um, Mr. Gosling's on the air saying that I accosted his wife. In, in City Hall. She's sitting behind her desk behind a counter. So, I mean, it was rather interesting. But, you know, these are the type of allegations that are made all the time. Um, and Mr. Goslin allegedly, and I, I say that very loosely, um, made a comment on, and I heard the comment, but again, I'm going to say allegedly, uh, on WSAR that I should meet him at his place of business, and he gave his address, um, and he'll show me. So, I mean, that sounds almost to me like it's a threat, but again, well, I ignored it and just, you know. Does that, does that sound like it's a follow-up to, to, the, to the meeting in, a, in the uh, automobile? You know, emotions no, are running kinda, very high. Emotions kinda, are running very high on this situation right now. I mean, people in the city are, are torn apart uh, on both sides. And, you know, the mayor had his rally that day at City Hall, and people were, you know, all shouting that the mayor couldn't do this, he didn't do this. Um, and now the mayor is backpedaling 
He's offering an olive, an olive branch, which basically Counselor Correa ignored today. He said, you know, no, I'm not going to take an apology. I want you to admit the truth. And then the mayor announced today that he's retaining a defense attorney. Uh, so we have to say what's going on. Well, if he re retained a defense attorney, then he's contemplating uh, possible charges being brought right. against him. Now, uh, people today uh, have been saying that he should just plain resign and let the, hit the city try to uh, get back together. Uh, what do you think about uh, Well, I think right now Fall River has suffered a tremendous wound, and several of them. And I think that the only way these wounds are going to heal is for the major cause of these wounds. And in my opinion, the mayor should step down and resign, and using his own words, for the benefit and the good of the city of Fall River. Because he states he loves the city and he wants to stop this whole thing. Well, to stop this whole thing, Mr. Mayor, you need to resign. Yeah, the controversy, uh, uh, as people have noted, uh, will, will continue, will continue forever in a sense. In other words, if, if there's uh, some kind of a hearing, uh, uh, an investigation uh, into it, uh, it might clear things up. But, uh, well, uh, C.J. Ferry uh, from uh, Spindle City, uh, Straight Talk. Yep. Nice to have you uh, on a program once again. And I hope out there you enjoyed what uh, C.J. had to say. It, it's, um, you know, it's one of these uh, types of things uh, that uh, does not normally happen when a city councilor and a mayor are sitting in the mayor's car. I want to also uh, just conclude with uh, letting people know, a reminder that uh, October 25th, we're going to have the uh, Diamond Din uh, excuse me, the uh, Friends of Cook Pond Dinner Dance at the Veterans Post uh, in Tiverton. Uh, doors are going to open at 6 o'clock. That's on a Saturday. <coughs> Tickets are $15. We'll have a nice chicken dinner with the works and dancing thereafter. So if you need tickets, let me know or someone on the committee. And thank you out there for watching.